So in this video we're having a look at sublimation templates in Affinity Designer and what I needed to do was have more than one image in a template so that I can swap an image in and out really easily simply by selecting the layer that the image is in and this is how I've done it. This may come in really handy for those of you doing sublimity, uh, sub, sublimation printing. That's a tongue twister. So loading the files. Create usable content using Affinity Designer. Now what I've started with is a tapered mug design and for this exercise we'll use that. It was made using the following instructions in another video that I have in the playlist and you'll see it there if you, if you go looking for it. But for this exercise I want to show you how to use multiple images for just one template and you will find the link to the complete Affinity Designer file that I use here in the description below the video. It's on my website in other words. So the original I'm using is a tapered 20 ounce sublimation mug. Um, bottom diameter 6 centimetres, top diameter 9 centimetres. It's the original tapered mug design that I've got. It contains the tapered mug shape, the original image, and some design elements. Okay, I found this. Yep, Siri trying to talk to me. Now, I've done this part on the iPad to emphasize how easy the changes are on either the iPad or desktop. Now, what I've got here is both of them. Some of this work is on iPad, and in other cases I've swapped to the desktop, just to show you how easy it is. Don't be put off by the fact that the iPad appears to be small. It's just as powerful as the desktop version. Now this is the original tapered mug design. It contains the tapered shape, the original image and some design elements. Now this is done on the desktop to emphasize how easy it is. And have a look on the right hand side in the layers panel. You'll see there's a number of curves, images, um, rectangles, and some text. That's the text along the top there. If you want to work on this file you can download it, open it in, in Affinity Designer. In fact you can probably open it in Affinity Photo as well and it'll work just as well. That's the good thing about the Affinity programs. They work on across all of the options. Now the next step. Open your original artwork and you can see I've got it there. You can play, either place the image or simply copy and paste it. Now if you're on a Mac and you tap on an image, it will open it in, usually in preview, where you can just select copy. And then you can go back to designer and paste it in, or paste it in as a layer. That's very useful. You then adjust the size and layer position. You can see that I have turned off the original image. That's that, that first pattern. It's turned off in this, in this case. Now if you want to adjust the size of the image you're bringing in, because as you can see there, it's the outlines, it's quite a bit larger, that blue line, than the entire image. But you can go to the Transform Studio and uh, turn the lock on and adjust that size so you bring it in and it will compress the image a little bit and keep uh, keep the aspect ratio correct because if you move it around you'll lose the aspect ratio. And as I say there I've readjusted the size. In this one I didn't worry too much about the aspect ratio quite simply because um, they're plants and they can be nearly any size and they're all kind of, well sort of, verticals. I've adjusted it to fit neatly in the rectangular boundary. Now that rectangular boundary is your paper and printing area. It also has the effect of scaling the image down somewhat, so you haven't got one or two big plants showing on there. And you'll see that later where I use an image of some horses. Now add more images. You can add more images to the project by simply adding them to a new layer beneath the curve. And you can turn them on or turn them off as you need them. This one's a camouflage layer. Very nice. If you know anybody who's into paintballing or in the military, 
they might just absolutely love a latte mug with a camouflage <laughs> with a camouflage um, pattern on it. Very nice. Tick visible or select the one you want to print, and then you uh, that's what you do. Print it out. Now the mug shape to begin. The base mug shape is placed in a rectangle. But when it was created, and you'll see this in the other video if you go and look for it, it's not created in quite that nice, let's sit this in a horizontal rectangle shape. It's actually a stroke, and I've drawn it over the original drawing which was created by another piece of software, as explained in another video. Because I'm not, I'm not going into that here, I'm just showing you how to put more than one image within your shape. Now the shape's turned on its side to orient it correctly on the screen within the rectangle that represents the paper it's printed on. You can see that rectangle is slightly angled there. That's the original printing and I had to do that to get it to fit within that boundary. That's a very specific size obviously to fit on your 20 ounce latte mug. But of course you want it in a shape that's usable. Now, here's some horses I've put on there. The horse pattern's not in its proper aspect ratio. The horses look very stretched out. But you can fix that easily. That's because I moved the bounding box, and you can see the blue dots either side, and that stretched the horses out. I moved those to fit rather than using the transform option. And you can see on the right hand side there, horse pattern 201 PNG is ticked. And this again is done on the iPad because you can see the dark um, interface. Very hard to see sometimes and it would be nice if it was changeable. The horse pattern's not in its proper aspect ratio, but I fixed it. Open transform and turn on the lock in dimensions to fix the aspect ratio and adjust the width. The height will adjust along with it. Now that's got the width, the right width. You can see the rectangle behind there and the blue bounding box dot is just on the left. But you've got bits and pieces of the horse. So that's probably not the right pattern to be on there unless whoever you're doing this for doesn't mind bits and pieces of horse. There's one main horse on there. But it's much easier than trying to adjust by dragging the handles because you won't maintain the correct aspect ratio if you do that. And your horses will look stretched out. Now there's the final project. Made large so only one horse is visible. Nice. And you can see on the right hand side where I've got the list of images and there's only the horse pattern is ticked, the others are unticked. Now there's a set of four. You can put as many image layers as you like in there. I've got the cornflower image in that layer image there. The top one is the cornflower image and that's the one that's selected. The horse, the camouflage and the witches are in the layers and they're in the project but they're not selected so normally you can't see them so you select the one you want and there they are that's about it don't forget if you want the entire file to play with make a copy of it duplicate it don't download it and then totally mess up the one you've downloaded much easier to work on a duplicate than to keep downloading the file but enjoy i hope that makes your sublimation of latte mugs or virtually anything you're printing because it works equally well in Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and probably even Affinity Publisher. Enjoy! Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.